Algiers, Wikipedia article audio. Algiers is the capital and largest city of Algeria. In 2011, the city's population was estimated to be around 3,500,000. An estimate puts the population of the larger metropolitan city to be around 5 million. Algiers is located on the Mediterranean Sea and in the north-central portion of Algeria. Sometimes nicknamed Elbidja or alternatively Alger La Blanche for the glistening white of its buildings as seen rising up from the sea, Algiers is situated on the west side of a bay of the Mediterranean Sea. The modern part of the city is built on the level ground by the seashore, the old part, the ancient city of the days, climbs the steep hill behind the modern town and is crowned by the Kasbah or citadel. 122 meters above the sea. The Kasbah and the two keys form a triangle. Etymology History The city name is derived from the Arabic name Al-Jazair, which translates as the islands, referring to the four islands which used to lie off the city's coast until becoming part of the mainland in 1525. Al-Jazair is itself a truncated form of the city's older name. Jazair Bani Majgana, the islands of the sons of Majgana, used by early medieval geographers such as Al-Idrisi and Yakut al -Hamaywai. A Phoenician commercial outpost called Icosum which later developed into a small Roman town called Icosium existed on what is now the marine quarter of the city. The Rue de la Marine follows the lines of what used to be a Roman street. Roman cemeteries existed near Bab el Oued and Bab Azoun. The city was given Latin rites by Emperor Vespasian. The bishops of Icosium are mentioned as late as the 5th century. The present-day city was founded in 944 by Balagine I. B. Nziri, the founder of the Berber Zirid Sanyaja dynasty. He had earlier built his own house in a Sanyaja center at Ashir, just south of Algiers. Although his Zirid dynasty was overthrown by Roger II of Sicily in 1148, the Zirids had already lost control of Algiers to their cousins the Hamadids in 1014. The city was wrested from the Hamadids by the Almohads in 1159, and in the 13th century came under the dominion of the Zianid sultans of Tlemcen. Nominally part of the Sultanate of Tlemcen, Algiers had a large measure of independence under emirs of its own due to Oran being the chief seaport of the Zianids. The Pennon of Algiers, an islet in front of Algiers harbour had been occupied by the Spaniards as early as 1302. Thereafter, a considerable amount of trade began to flow between Algiers and Spain. However, Algiers continued to be of comparatively little importance until after the expulsion of the Moors from Spain, many of whom sought asylum in the city. In 1510, following their occupation of Oran and other towns on the coast of Africa, the Spaniards fortified the islet of Penan and imposed a levy intended to suppress corsair activity. In 1516, the Emir of Algiers, Salim B. Tiamai, invited the Corsair brothers Arujé and Hayardin Barbarossa to expel the Spaniards. Arujé came to Algiers, ordered the assassination of Salim, and seized the town and ousted the Spanish in the capture of Algiers. Hayardin, succeeding Arujé after the latter was killed in battle against the Spaniards in the fall of Tlemcen, was the founder of the Peshalak, which subsequently became the Balak, of Algeria. Barbarossa lost Algiers in 1524 but regained it with the capture of Algiers, 
and then formally invited the Sultan Suleiman the Magnificent to accept sovereignty over the territory and to annex Algiers to the Ottoman Empire. Ottoman Rule Algiers from this time became the chief seat of the Barbary pirates. In October 1541 in the Algiers expedition, the King of Spain and Holy Roman Emperor Charles V sought to capture the city, but a storm destroyed a great number of his ships, and his army of some 30,000, chiefly made up of Spaniards, was defeated by the Algerians under their Pasha, Hassan. Formally part of the Ottoman Empire but essentially free from Ottoman control, starting in the 16th century Algiers turned to piracy and ransoming. Due to its location on the periphery of both the Ottoman and European economic spheres, and depending for its existence on a Mediterranean that was increasingly controlled by European shipping, backed by European navies, piracy became the primary economic activity. Repeated attempts were made by various nations to subdue the pirates that disturbed shipping in the western Mediterranean and engaged in slave raids as far north as Iceland. The United States fought two wars over Algiers' attacks on shipping. French Rule Among the notable people held for ransom was the future Spanish novelist Miguel de Cervantes, who was captive in Algiers almost five years and who wrote two plays set in Algiers of the period. The primary source for knowledge of Algiers of this period, since there are no contemporary local sources, is the Topographia e Historia General de Argel, published by Diego de Hedo, but whose authorship is disputed. This work describes in detail the city, the behavior of its inhabitants, and its military defenses with the unsuccessful hope of facilitating an attack by Spain so as to end the piracy. A significant number of renegades lived in Algiers at the time, Christians converted voluntarily to Islam, many fleeing the law or other problems at home. Once converted to Islam, they were safe in Algiers. Many occupied positions of authority, such as Samson Rowley, an Englishman who became treasurer of Algiers. The city under Ottoman control was enclosed by a wall on all sides, including along the seafront. In this wall, five gates allowed access to the city, with five roads from each gate dividing the city and meeting in front of the Kechewa Mosque. In 1556, a citadel was constructed at the highest point in the wall. A major road running north to south divided the city in two, the upper city which consisted of about 50 small quarters of Andalusian, Jewish, Moorish and Kabyle communities, and the lower city which was the administrative, military and commercial center of the city, mostly inhabited by Turkish dignitaries and other upper-class families. Algerian War In August 1816, the city was bombarded by a British squadron under Lord Exmouth, assisted by Dutch men of war, destroying the Corsair fleet harbored in Algiers. Independence The history of Algiers from 1830 to 1962 is bound to the larger history of Algeria and its relationship to France. On July 4, 1830, under the pretext of an affront to the French consul whom the day had hit with a fly whisk when the consul said the French government was not prepared to pay its large outstanding debts to two Algerian merchants a French army under General de Bourmont attacked the city in the 1830 invasion of Algiers. The city capitulated the following day. Algiers became the capital of French Algeria. Crisis of the 1990s Many Europeans settled in Algiers, and by the early 20th century they formed a majority of the city's population. During the 1930s, 
the architect L.E. Corbusier drew up plans for a complete redesign of the colonial city. L.E. Corbusier was highly critical of the urban style of Algiers, describing the European district as nothing but crumbling walls and devastated nature, the whole a sullied blot. He also criticized the difference in living standards he perceived between the European and African residents of the city, describing a situation in which the civilized live like rats in holes whereas the barbarians live in solitude, in well-being. However, these plans were ultimately ignored by the French administration. During World War II, Algiers was the first city to be seized from the Germans by the Allies during Operation Torch. Geography In 1962, after a bloody independence struggle in which hundreds of thousands died during fighting between the French army and the Algerian Front de Liberation Nationale, Algeria gained its independence, with Algiers as its capital. Since then, despite losing its entire Pied Noir population, the city has expanded massively. It now has about 5 million inhabitants or 10% of Algeria's population and its suburbs now cover most of the surrounding Mitagia plain. Algiers also played a pivotal role in the Algerian War, particularly during the Battle of Algiers when the 10th Parachute Division of the French Army, starting on January 7, 1957, and on the orders of the French Minister of Justice François Mitterrand, led attacks against the Algerian fighters for independence. Algiers remains marked by this battle, which was characterized by merciless fighting between FLN forces which carried out a guerrilla campaign against the French military and police and pro-French Algerian soldiers, and the French army which responded with a bloody repression, torture and blanket terrorism against the native population. The demonstrations of May 13 during the crisis of 1958 provoked the fall of the Fourth Republic Indiana France, as well as the return of General de Gaulle to power. Algeria achieved independence on July 5, 1962. Run by the FLN that had secured independence, Algiers became a member of non-aligned movement during the Cold War. In October 1988, one year before the fall of the Berlin Wall, Algiers was the site of demonstrations demanding the end of the single-party system and the creation of a real democracy baptized the Spring of Algier. The demonstrators were repressed by the authorities, but the movement constituted a turning point in the political history of modern Algeria. In 1989, a new constitution was adopted that put an end to the one-party rule and saw the creation of more than 50 political parties, as well as official freedom of the press. The city became the theater of many political demonstrations of all descriptions until 1993. In 1991, a political entity dominated by religious conservatives called the Islamic Salvation Front engaged in a political test of wills with the authorities. In the 1992 elections for the Algerian National Assembly, the Islamists garnered a large amount of support in the first round, helped by a massive abstention from disillusioned Algerian voters by the turn of events. Fearing an eventual win by the Islamists, the army cancelled the election process, setting off a civil war between the state and armed religious conservatives which would last for a decade. On December 11, 2007, two car bombs exploded in Algiers. One bomb targeted two United Nations buildings and the other targeted a government building housing the Supreme Court. The death toll was at least 62 with over 200 injured in the attacks. However, only 26 remained hospitalized the following day. As of 2008, it is speculated that the attack was carried out by the Al-Qaeda cell within the city.
Districts of Algiers Indigenous terrorist groups have been actively operating in Algeria since around 2002. Climate Algiers has a Mediterranean climate. Its proximity to the Mediterranean Sea aids in moderating the city's temperatures. As a result, Algiers usually does not see the extreme temperatures that are experienced in the adjacent interior deserts. Algiers on average receives roughly 600 mm of rain per year, the bulk of which is seen between October and April. The precipitation is very similar to coastal Mediterranean Spain as opposed to the interior North African arid climate. 1943-100,000 people lived in Algiers, 1960-900,000 people lived in Algiers, 1963-600,000 people lived in Algiers. Snow is very rare, in 2012, the city received 10 centimeters, its first snowfall in eight years. There are many public buildings of interest including the whole Casbah Quarter, Martyrs Square, the government offices, the Grand, New and Quechua Mosques, the Roman Catholic Cathedral of Notre Dame d'Afrique, the Bardo Museum, the old Bibliothèque Nationale d'Alger a Turkish palace built in 1799-1800 and the new National Library, built in a style reminiscent of the British Library. Lycée International Alexander Dumas, Roma Italian School of Algiers, Russian Embassy School in Algiers, El Kalamat School. The main building in the Kasbah was begun in 1516 on the site of an older building, and served as the palace of the days until the French conquest. A road has been cut through the center of the building, the mosque turned into barracks, and the hall of audience allowed to fall into ruin. There still remain a minaret and some marble arches and columns. Traces exist of the vaults in which were stored the treasures of the day. Government Local architecture Monuments Demographics The Great Mosque is the oldest mosque in Algiers. It was first built by Yusuf ibn Tashfin, but reconstructed many times. The pulpit bears an inscription showing that the building existed in 1097. The minaret was built by the Sultan of Tlemcen, in 1324. The interior of the mosque is square and is divided into aisles by columns joined by Moorish arches. El Madania Beluizdad, Notre Dame d'Afrique Balagain, Memorial des Martyrs slash Riyad El Feth Jardin d'Essays, Palais de la Culture au Uidnis. The new mosque, dating from the 17th century, is in the form of a Greek cross, surmounted by a large white cupola, with four small cupolas at the corners. The minaret is 27 meters high. The interior resembles that of the Grand Mosque. The Church of the Holy Trinity stands at the southern end of the Rue d'Isli near the site of the demolished Fort Bab Azoun. The interior is richly decorated with various colored marbles. Many of these marbles contain memorial inscriptions relating to the British residents of Algiers from the time of John Tipton, the first English consul in 1580. One tablet records that in 1631 two Algerine pirate crews landed in Ireland, sacked Baltimore and enslaved its inhabitants. The Quechua Mosque, at the foot of the Caspa, was before independence in 1962 the Cathedral of St. Philippe itself made in 1845 from a mosque dating from 1612. The principal entrance, reached by a flight of 23 steps, is ornamented with a portico supported by four black-veined marble columns. 
The roof of the nave is of Moorish plaster work. It rests on a series of arcades supported by white marble columns. Several of these columns belonged to the original mosque. In one of the chapels was a tomb containing the bones of San Geronimo. The building seems a curious blend of Moorish and Byzantine styles. Lisbon, Portugal, Paris, France Algiers possesses a college with schools of law, medicine, science, and letters. The college buildings are large and handsome. The Bardo Museum in Tunisia holds some of the ancient sculptures and mosaics discovered in Algeria, together with metals and Algerian money. The port of Algiers is sheltered from all winds. There are two harbours, both artificial the Old or Northern Harbour and the Southern or Aga Harbour. The Northern Harbour covers an area of 95 hectares. An opening in the South Jetty affords an entrance into Aga Harbour, constructed in Aga Bay. Aga Harbour has also an independent entrance on its southern side. The inner harbour was begun in 1518 by Ker ad Din Barbarossa, who, to accommodate his pirate vessels, caused the island on which was Fort Pennon to be connected with the mainland by a mole. The lighthouse which occupies the site of Fort Pennon was built in 1544. Algiers was a walled city from the time of the days until the close of the 19th century. The French, after their occupation of the city, built a rampart, parapet and ditch, with two terminal forts, bab Azoun, to the south and bab el to the north. The forts and part of the ramparts were demolished at the beginning of the 20th century, when a line of forts occupying the heights of Buzaria above the sea took their place. Economy Notre Dame d'Afrique, a church built in a mixture of the Roman and Byzantine styles, is conspicuously situated overlooking the sea, on the shoulder of the Buzaria Hills three kilometers to the north of the city. Above the altar is a statue of the Virgin depicted as a black woman. The church also contains a solid silver statue of the Archangel Michael, belonging to the confraternity of Neapolitan fishermen. Villa Abdltif, former residence of the day, was used during the French period to accommodate French artists, chiefly painters and winners of the ABDLTIF prize, among whom Maurice Boydell, for a while of two years. Nowadays, Algerian artists are back in the villa's studios. Algiers has a population of about 3,335,418. Tourist Installations Education Public Transport The ethnic distribution is 53% from an Arabic-speaking background, 44% from a Berber-speaking background and 3% foreign-born. Algiers is an important economic, commercial and financial centre, with in particular a stock exchange with a capitalization of 60 million euros. The city has the highest cost of living of any city in North Africa, as well as the 50th highest worldwide, as of March 2007, having gained one position compared to the previous year. Mohammed Ben Ali El Abar, President of the Council of Administration of the Emirate Group EMAR, presented five mega-projects to Algerian President Abdelaziz Bouteflika during a ceremony which took place Saturday, July 15, within the Palace of the People of Algiers. These projects will transform the city of Algiers and its surroundings by equipping them with a retail area and restoration and leisure facilities. The first project will concentrate on the reorganization and the development of the infrastructures of the railway station AGA located in the downtown area. 
The ultra-modern station intended to accommodate more than 80.000 passengers per day, will become a center of circulation in the heart of the grid system, surrounded by commercial offices and buildings and hotels intended for travelers in transit. A shopping center and three high-rise office buildings rising with the top of the commercial zone will accompany the project. The second project will not relate to the Bay of Algiers and aims to revitalize the sea front. The development of the 44km sea front will include marinas, channels, luxury hotels, offices, apartments of great standing, luxury stores, and leisure amenities. A crescent-shaped peninsula will be set up on the open sea. The project of the Bay of Algiers will also comprise six small islands, of which four of round form, connected to each other by bridges and marinas and will include tourist and residential complexes. Province Projects The third project will relate to restructuring an area of Algiers, qualified by the originators of the project of City of Wellness. El Abar indicated to the journalists that the complex would be agreeable for all those which will want to combine tourism and well-being or tourism and relaxation. The complex will include a university, a research center and a medical center. It should also include a hospital complex, a care center, a hotel zone, an urban center and a thermal spa with villas and apartments. The university will include a medical school and a school for care male nurses which will be able to accommodate 500 students. The university campus will have the possibility of seeing setting up broad ranges of buildings of research laboratories and residences. Another project relates to technological implantation of a campus in Sidi Abdella, 25 km southeast from Algiers. This 90 hectares site will include shopping centers, residential zones with high standard apartments and a golf course surrounded by villas and hotels. Two other residential zones, including 1.800 apartments and 40 high standard villas, will be built on the surrounding hills. The fifth project is that of the tourist complex Colonel Abbeys which will be located 25 km west from Algiers. This complex will include several retail zones, meeting places, and residential zones composed of apartments and villas with views of the sea. Currently there is another project under construction, by the name of Algiers Medina. The first step of the project is nearly complete. A Hewlett-Packard office for French-speaking countries in Africa is in Algiers. Some 20 kilometers to the west of Algiers are such seaside resorts as Sidi Fred J, Palm Beach, Douadouda, Zirolda, and the Club of the Pines. There are tourist complexes, Algerian and other restaurants, souvenir shops, supervised beaches, and other amenities. The city is also equipped with important hotel complexes such as the Hotel Hilton, El Orisi, or El Jazair. Algiers also has the first water park in the country. The tourism of Algiers is growing but is not as developed as that of the larger cities in Morocco or Tunisia. International schools for foreign residents include There was formerly the Ecole Japonis d'Alger a school for Japanese children. Four urban ropeways Several ongoing projects aim to solve Algiers' deficit and transportation problems. A tram connecting the downtown area to Durgana is expected to open by the end of 2010. Subway lines connecting to Fora Large Herrick Post Office L were expected in 2008 in addition to three regional express network lines, Algiers AGA Athenia, Algiers AGA Lafraun, Algiers AGA Zirolda. Three new cable cars, 
reconstruction of roads and restoration of the city station which will accommodate the high-speed rail line connecting Anaba, Algiers and Oran are also ongoing. Congestion control measures including new roundabouts and motorways are also being added to the city. Sports Football clubs New residential developments aim to solve Algiers' current housing shortage. Algiers is the sporting centre of Algeria. The city has a number of professional clubs in the variety of sports, which have won national and international titles. Among the sports facilities within the city, there is an enormous sporting complex complex of Oko Mohamed Boudiaf. This includes the State 5 Jewel at 1962, a venue for athletics, an Olympic swimming pool, a multi-sports room, an 18-hole golf course, and several tennis courts. International Relations The following major sporting events have been held in Algiers. Twin Towns Sister Cities Cooperation Agreements Films about Algiers Notes Bibliography Major association football club based in Algiers include Algiers is twinned with Algiers has cooperation agreements with In addition, many of the wards and cities within Algiers maintain sister city relationships with other foreign cities.